It's the entering light of Christ. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. May God be with you all. Let us sing our thanks to God. Blessed are you, creator of the universe, from old you have
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading tonight comes from the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There are a lot of reasons in our daily lives for which we wait. We wait in the waiting room to see the doctor, to get called back to the room. We We wait in line at the grocery checkout. We wait in traffic far more than we might want to. We wait to pick up the kids from whatever activity they might be running to and from. It seems like we spend a good chunk of our lives waiting for one reason or another. A lot of those moments seem like we wait without a whole lot of purpose to it. It's just passing some time, and so we do whatever we need to do. We read a book, we check Facebook, We call a friend, we play a game on our phones, whatever other thing you do to occupy your time and your mind. In Advent, of course, we wait as well. It's a whole season of waiting. As Christians, we wait to hear the news once again of the birth of a Savior, Jesus. But as Christians, we wait for even more than that. Throughout the season of Advent, on Sunday mornings, we also hear a lot of texts that are pretty apocalyptic. They're those end times kinds of texts that talk about the second coming of Christ when when Christ will return and make all creation new. We wait for that in this season of Advent as well. But it's not just like waiting for an appointment or waiting for traffic. That kind of waiting, waiting to hear the birth of Christ and waiting for the second coming of Christ We wait with anticipation. We wait with hope. Now, if if you've got a family at home and you've traveled for work, maybe you have similar experiences to this, but I don't travel a huge amount for work. But when I do and I've been gone for a week, I can can remember, especially the littler the girls were when it happened, the anticipation. You talk to them on the phone, and each day as you get closer to the return trip, The anticipation, the hope of seeing one another grows until you get out of the car, you step off the plane, and you see each other once again. That kind of anticipation and hope that comes with knowing that there's joy at the other end. Our reading from Romans tonight talks about waiting. And it talks about a kind of waiting with hope and anticipation only it's even more so than waiting for a family member to come home. This is waiting with hope and anticipation for God, the creator of the universe, the one who has saved us all to come once again, to renew the whole face of the earth in which we live. Romans describes this this waiting as labor pains. Now, 
I say this as a man because I've never experienced those labor pains. But after the, the waiting and the pain that comes with birth, you know, Danielle usually referred to it as kind of that mommy amnesia, that sometimes you forget exactly what all of the pain was like because all of a sudden that joy is there. This new life is in your arms. And the same, I think, rings true of this world. Right now, we do groan in labor pains because we live in a world that's broken. We live in a world that's hurting. We live in a world that is painful. But with Christ, with that new birth, will come joy and new life that lasts forever with God. In our passage from Romans, it says, For in hope we were saved. We live, we wait for that salvation to, to come to fruition. We know that promise already. It's, it's why we can live as a people so hope-filled. It's already happened, though. Christ has already come and died on the cross for us so that we can be hope-filled people, knowing that we have been saved, even if we don't fully experience it in God's presence until later. We wait. We wait already knowing the end result. That we are adopted, beloved children of God. That we have been brought in to God's love and mercy and forgiveness. And that regardless of what the world throws at us each and every day, no matter the different ways and times and amounts in which we wait, we know that in the end, God holds the victory. And that because of that, because of God's power and God's love, we have salvation in God's presence forever. Our passage tonight begins, Consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. About to be revealed to us, we still wait for that moment. But in essence, this passage says that the waiting, the brokenness of this world, the hate, the fear, the violence, the poverty, the hunger, all of those things that we hate to see so much of in our world, they will be no comparison. They will be no comparison to the glory of being in God's presence forever. That's the hope. That's the waiting with anticipation that allows us in the midst of hardships and grief and pain and illness to dare to have hope as we live in those moments of waiting in our lives. We know the hope of life with God that has already been one for us that has no end and that we will be blessed to experience with God always. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not, not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, so highly favored for God is with you. You shall bear a child and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. in you. 
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and light. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. bless our God. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of peace of Christ be with you always. Share that peace. 